Hi! In this video we're going to talk about complex sentences. And complex sentences contain a dependent clause and an independent clause. So they are different from compound sentences which contain two or more independent clauses. So here's our definition of complex sentences. As I mentioned already, they are comprised of one independent clause and one or more dependent clause. So independent clauses, as a review, can stand alone as a complete sentence because they contain a subject and a verb and they express a complete thought. Dependent clauses also contain a subject and a verb but they cannot stand alone as a complete sentence because they do not express a complete thought. They have some word that makes the clause dependent, that leaves you hanging wanting more information. So here are some examples. Here's an independent clause. The rainforest could disappear. We have a subject, rainforest. We have our whole verb, could disappear. And it's a complete thought. So it can be a complete sentence. It's independent. It can stand alone. The rainforest could disappear. On the other hand, we have an example here of a dependent clause. Unless steps are taken immediately. We do have a subject steps and we have our whole verb are taken. However, because of the word unless, this clause is not a complete thought. It leaves us hanging, wanting more information. So it needs to be connected to an independent clause to form a complex sentence. So here's our example. The rainforest could disappear unless steps are taken immediately. So it contains both the independent clause and the dependent clause. There are two different types of complex sentences. There are complex sentences that include subordinating conjunctions. So here is an example. When the fish ate the bait, Martina reeled it in. When is a subordinate conjunction. And the part in italics, this is our dependent clause. When the fish ate the bait. So it leaves us hanging, wanting more information because of that subordinate conjunction when. The other type of complex sentence is a complex sentence with a relative pronoun. And here's an example. Email, which has been popular for many years, is losing its status to text and instant messaging. So in this case, our dependent clause is in italics, which has been popular for many years. And it's dependent because of the relative pronoun which. So we're going to focus first on the complex sentences with subordinating conjunctions. There are many different subordinate conjunctions, and these are just a few of the examples here. We can use subordinate conjunctions to express meaning so that we can show the relationship between the ideas in the two clauses. Subordinate conjunctions can express time. Some examples are after, before, until, when, while, since. They can also express reason or cause, words like as or because. They can also express result or effect. Some examples are in order that or so that. They can express a condition, such as some examples include even if, if, or unless. And they can also be used to express contrast. So subordinate conjunctions including although, even though, though, whereas. And these are just some of the examples of subordinate conjunctions. When we use a subordinate conjunction, in a complex sentence, we have two different patterns. One option is to put the dependent clause first. If we put the dependent clause first, and as we see in this example, we need to use a comma. So here's our example. Even though she studied for the exam until 2 a.m., she did not receive an A. So our subordinate conjunction is even though, and even though she studied for the exam until 2 a.m. is our dependent clause. And that came first, so we needed to put the comma right there at the end of the dependent clause. The other option is to start with the independent clause. And if we do that, and the dependent clause follows the independent clause, then we don't need to use a comma. So here we have the same two clauses in a different order. 
she did not receive an A even though she studied for the exam until 2 a.m. So that second clause, even though she studied for the exam until 2 a.m., is still our dependent clause, but it follows the independent clause, so we do not need any commas. So essentially, when we're writing a complex sentence with a sub subordinate conjunction, the order of the clauses is what tells us whether we need to use a comma or not. If the dependent clause comes first, we use a comma. If the independent clause comes before the dependent clause, then we do not need to use a comma. The other type of complex sentence is a complex sentence that contains relative pronouns. So some examples, the most common relative pronouns, are who, which, and that. Who refers to people. So here's an example. He is the man who bought the car. And who bought the car is the dependent clause in that sentence. Which refers to things. Here's an example. Years of effort produced the Hubble telescope, which is very powerful. And which is very powerful is our dependent clause in that case. That refers to things or to groups of people. The subject that we discussed was global warming. So there we're referring to the subject. And that we discussed is our dependent clause. The Beatles was the band that changed music forever. In this case, that refers to the Beatles, and that changed music forever is our dependent clause. So notice that it is possible when we're using a relative pronoun for the dependent clause to be the second half of the sentence, like in this first example. He is the man who bought the car. We have independent clause, then dependent clause. The other possibility is that we have our dependent clause inserted in the middle of our independent clause. So that would be this example here. The subject that we discussed was global warning, warming. So our dependent clause is here in italics that we discussed, and you can see that it's inserted right in the middle of the main clause, right in the middle of the independent clause. Next, we're going to talk about punctuating complex sentences with relative pronouns. Um, the rules for punctuation with relative pronouns are very different from other grammatical rules because we need to actually take a look at the meaning of the sentence. Um, when we're using the relative pronoun that, no commas are necessary because of the way that we use that. Here's an example. The freshman did the homework that was assigned. So that was assigned is our dependent clause. No commas necessary. However, when we use who or which, commas may be necessary. So this is where we have to actually take a look at the meaning of the sentence to determine whether we're going to use a comma or not. So commas are necessary when the information in the clause is non-restrictive. That means when the information is extra and not necessary to the meaning of the sentence. So let's look at an example here. My car, which is a Honda, is very old. So if we look at the information in the dependent clause, our dependent clause is here, which is a Honda. That does not change the meaning of the main clause. The main clause, our independent clause, is my car is very old. So the information that's included in the relative clause, the fact that my car is a Honda, is just extra information. It doesn't add anything to the sentence or doesn't restrict which car I'm talking about. We already know that I'm talking about my car. So, in cases such as this one, we do have to use commas because that information is extra and it could be removed from the sentence without changing the meaning. On the other hand, commas are not necessary when the information in the clause is restrictive. That means when the information is necessary to the meaning of the sentence. So let's look at this example here. 
the car that is in the yellow zone is going to be towed. So our relative clause, our dependent clause is right here. That is in the yellow zone. It's telling this, in this clause, the information is telling us, oops, let me get back to it. Here it is. Um, the car that is in the yellow zone is going to be towed. That information, the fact that the car is in the yellow zone, is telling us which car we're talking about. We're not talking about any car, but we're using that pronoun. Oops. I keep losing my place here accidentally. So, um, the fact that the car is in the yellow zone is the reason that it's going to be towed. And that information in that relative clause is telling us which car we're talking about. So in this case, the information in the relative clause is necessary to the meaning of the sentence. So we do not use commas. So basically, with who or which, we need to use commas if the information in the relative clause is extra information. However, we do not use commas when the information is necessary to the meaning of the sentence. So those are our two different types of complex sentences. Complex sentences with subordinate conjunctions and complex sentences with relative pronouns. Overall, complex sentences are very important. Like compound sentences, we can use them in writing to help the writing become more sophisticated. They help connect ideas and show the relationship between ideas. They help writers achieve sentence variety, and we can achieve greater impact if we use a variety of sentences, including complex sentences.